I'm at Oranmore today with one of Scotland's best loved play playwrights, Rona Munro, who has adapted for the Scottish stage our first production of the mini season of plays by Chinese writers. And I'm also with Xu Wei, who is a guest uh, associate producer of the National Theatre of Scotland and one of the masterminds behind the season. Xu Wei has worked very closely with David Anderson uh, putting this season together and uh, I'm delighted to have you both here today. Uh, Xu Wei, t tell us a little bit about, about the season. Um, the, the Chinese play season was, um, the idea was came about uh, two years ago when one of the directors from the National City of China, Tian Tingqing, came to visit us as a resident director um, and she was really impressed by how um, the new writing environment here and how the writers were supported and, and, and how there was a lunchtime play audience um, all over the year on Bias Road. So um, she thought it was a very interesting thing and um, she wanted to explore how um, the two organisations can work together um, and to provide a platform for cultural exchange um, and also storytelling um, mm -hmm. about contemporary China. So that's how the season came about and then we started um, this very long process of um, selecting writers from 150 um, Chinese writers um, and then um, Davy and George went over and also Rona um, from a pool of 10 writers that were selected from 150. We did a workshop with them for in two Beijing. weeks in Beijing yeah. for two weeks um, and then from that 10 really painfully we selected um, six of them to come over um, and work with National City of Scotland um, for eight days. Uh, we gave them dramaturgical support, we gave them actors to read the play, um, some of them, um, for some of them it's like the first time their plays ever been read by actors, yeah. and it's by Scottish actors, so that was really interesting. Um, and then from that six, we selected the final three, um, Secrets by Ling Wei Ran, um, Seeds and Boys by Hao Jing Fang and Fox Adak by Shuno and they're all very, con send a contemporary message, very urgent and some of them are very political. Yes. Rona, yes. today we opened the first one, Secrets, mm. which you adapted. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was, uh, it's always a really interesting experience being a translator or an adapter on someone else's work because you feel the kind of dual responsibility of making it work for an audience, a Scottish audience first and foremost, but also to kind of honour the writer's intention so that it, it's, it, it needed to be, I mean I really felt it needed to be in Oyran's um, play and not mine. Um, and I think we kind of got the balance of that right, I mean aided by the fact that it was actually a really strong script. Um, it's a really subtle and delicate piece of writing and it's one of those plays where I mean I'll, I'll, it's not mine I can see it it's it's, it's you know it's, it's like Chekhovian I think in as much as that the, the, in a way you go what happened in that scene and there's been a huge emotional journey but in terms of the actual action it, it you would say well actually very little happened but the, the experience for the audience is of being in this kind of intense emotional pressure cooker um, and, it, and it was really a matter of looking at the lines, and because obviously I can't read Mandarin, so I'm completely dependent on the on the and skill the of the translator. the translator. Yeah, the literal translation, and and of going okay. So and there was always lines where you think, does she mean that, or did she want to mean that? And you just it was it's it's about trying to match your style to the other writer's style and see if you, you can kind of understand. You know, when they're doing that, they actually want a thought change, and when they're doing that, they actually want an emotional change. And hope you've got that right. Yeah. And uh, I think we did. On the yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm right on the way to tell me that, and, and you reckon that we've got it pretty right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What did you think about the audience's reaction to this? I think that's fantastic. Um, it's brilliant that the play is really about the gender politics be between. And the girl and, 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 and the boy, well, the man and the woman, and it's, it's very heavy, it's very incredibly intense, it drained you completely emotional, 
you know, like in, in, in the end of the end of the play, but also it gives you space to breathe, to kind of have a bit of laughter, a bit of light. I think the audience absolutely got that. They laughed and also cried. Mm -hmm. I see a couple of dear, you know, watery eyes, which is really good. So I think it was surprisingly well, I think, the response. Mm -hmm. Really good. What do you, what do you think? Do you oh, yeah, but I think that was the sort of experience, actually, of yeah, kind of working with Chinese writers and you know being involved in this play and, and peripherally the others as well. It, it that's the thing I find most exciting and, and kind of most moving about the whole thing is that you know you are talking about two cultures that are thousands of miles apart and perceived to be enormously different. But when you actually boil it down to what's funny, what makes people cry, what's dramatic. It's the same. It's the same stuff, and I think that's what it's, it's an added excitement for me. Always kind of when you're seeing yeah. contemporary plays in translation, when it works for for a Scottish audience, because you kind of think, you know, we are all dealing with the same stuff, and that's such a really important thing. You know? I found it fascinating that having done seasons of plays from Latin America and from the Arab world, certainly on the evidence of today's play and the read through of the second one I was at this morning, in a funny way, these plays feel much closer to our experience than the other ones do. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I sat today through both the reading of the second play and the performance of the one you adapted, thinking, how very Scottish, yes. <laughs> how yeah. very British. Yeah. Um, yes. And not how strangely Chinese. Yes, and and I, I think that's uh, one of the exciting things, isn't it, about doing work from other cultures, that one tends to have a sort of succession of stereotypes in one's mind yes. about countries, um, usually fed to us by, by an ignorant press. Mm. And yes. it's so lovely to have the direct contact with other minds. Yeah. And it's funny actually just the experience of being in China and obviously one's experience is always so subjective and you know my experience of China is minuscule, you know, talking about all those billions of people in that vast nature and I've seen that but, but even with all those caveats, that experience, the thing that struck me and I think we all said this, you know, um, Davy and, and George from uh, National Theatre of Scotland and myself all said the same thing which was when we were, obviously you don't have a common language when you're talking to people, but the body language was really mm. Scottish. Uh -huh. and, and the things that were funny and the way people were rude to each other, uh -huh. but it's actually affectionate, uh -huh. was really Scottish. I yeah. mean, specifically Scottish, not English. Uh -huh. And it could be that we were deluding ourselves because we were, you know, in with such a lovely bunch of people who were, you know, determined that we would be comfortable and happy. But it, it didn't, it really, I, well, and, and I would say the same about yourself, you've got a very Scottish sense of humour. You know, it does seem the humour definitely translates. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 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 The humour and the hospitality. Yes, And also yes. The, the passion towards life and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do find a familiarity between um, Scottish culture and Chinese culture, weirdly, in a really kind of weird sense. And also when um, all the Chinese writers working with the Scottish writers, um, it kind of connect instantly, um, mm -hmm. which I think is really interesting because all the plays that's being adapted now by Scottish writers, I don't see an attitude, if you know what I mean, like, you know, um, to this is other, this is others, yes, and I'm summarising you, and I'm mm -hmm. snapshotting and to present to a Western audience, yes. and I'm telling you this is contemporary China, and here is my attitude. There you go. Mm -hmm. And people would, oh, click, that's it. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I saw from the West Media, or this is what I thought, you know, what BBC and Guardian told me. Yes. But, um, mm -hmm. um, but this feel actually really grounded, really about the story, about the people, it's contemporary, it's urgent, and also it's universal as well. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's something that we all care about. It's about love, about betrayal, about justice, and, you know, everything. So I found that really exciting because we, we, we've gone through such a long time of posh polishing those plays and work, working with the Chinese writers. Mm -hmm. It took a year, 12 months mm -hmm. um, with 10, 20 writers from those countries. So um, I think that's... that's do, you think, do you think this season might whet the appetite of writers in, in China for their work to be seen abroad more? Absolutely. I think this would be a great um, kind of... Um, 
leap ahead mm -hmm. for them to see actually the, the voice can be heard um, on the bigger stage um, internationally in Scotland to, to, as a start mm -hmm. um, and there's an audience an appetite for it as well so I think yeah. this is a very brave thing that um, our more player kind of point is doing to pr give them the platform to let their voice to be heard. Well I, I, I mean I don't think it's brave at all but uh, <laughs> I think it, it, it's demanded by the audience's curiosity um, and it's certainly in the longer term it's an intention to mix up the work from Latin America, the Arab world, China the Commonwealth or wherever we do plays from within the seasons um, and just to make it part of that diet. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. how, di how diverse would that be? Yes. That's yeah. what made Scotland. I have to tell you one story um, which is when Shiwe brought the writers to Scotland uh, <laughs> after we had um, done a very intensive week with writers like Rona and others um, I noticed that there was no fun plan there. So we took everybody up to the Trotics and we had a nice lunch by Loch Venica. And then we got a lot of little motorboats and we set up off Loch Venica with the sky blue and the sun shining. And I was driving one of the boats with three young ladies, all Chinese playwrights. And they all burst into song and I killed the engine and they started singing this song. And when they finished, I said, what, what is that song? And they said, oh, it's a very popular Chinese folk song about a man pulling a boat along the canal with a girl in it. And the girl is singing how much she loves the man. That was one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what a delight. I'm very grateful to you for bringing this wonderful body of work. I'm very grateful to you for helping it happen. And I really hope that you will come and see these plays because they are so interesting and so enjoyable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.